What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we are going to be discussing Black Ops 4. The private beta has just come to an end, and a lot of people are wondering, so how is this game? Is Black Ops 4 any good, or does it suck? Well, that's the topic for today's video. We're going to go over the things that I believe are good. Good additions that Black Ops 4 brings to the table in terms of a Call of Duty, and the things that I think are not so good. The things that are objectively bad in my opinion and that I'm worried about. And so that at the end of the video, hopefully you guys can make a decision on whether or not you want to participate in next weekend's open beta or whether or not you want to pre-order the game or buy it in general. So let's get started. Now, this is actually my second time playing Black Ops 4. I did also get to play it a couple of times at E3 2018. So I'm a little bit more experienced than most. I did get uh, to the max level of 34, I believe, in the beta this weekend as well. So I'm, I'm relatively experienced again with this game. And even though I don't post any Call of Duty, really, I've somehow still managed to get Master Prestige in almost all of them. Call of Duty has always had a fun factor to it, in my opinion. It's great to just go in with your friends, stomp some kids, call in some killstreaks. It has a certain charm that I think a lot of other shooters miss when they kind of take themselves a little bit too seriously. But that being said, I certainly do have my opinions on the direction of the franchise and, you know, the best ones in the franchise. However, we are talking about the new edition, Black Ops 4. And let's start here with talking about the good. Things I believe are positive, things I believe that Black Ops 4 does really well, if not better than most other Call of Duties. And number one absolutely has to be the return of the Pick 10 system. The Pick 10 system, I believe, is superior when it comes to all the other creative class options out there for Call of Duties. It lets you really spec into what you want. If you want to run just a bare bones gun and a bunch of perks, it lets you do that. If you want to do the opposite and load your gun with attachments and sacrifice most of your perks, maybe just run one or two, it lets you do that. And everything in between. It allows for those melee classes that just have the knife or whatever. It allows for, you know, snipers to really pick the gear and the perks they want. And it even allows for you to spec into equipment and run multiple grenades and stuff like that. It allows you to do a bunch of different things that you know, in a game like World War II that has a really dumbed down class system, it doesn't let you do. It's everyone is using just one basic training, everyone has relatively the same amount of attachments on their weapons, and there's no really variation in between that. So, the Pick 10 system is just going to allow for a lot more creativity and options when it comes to making your loadout, which I believe is a good thing, and if you're coming from Black Ops 2 or Black Ops 3 and you enjoyed those creative class systems, you're going to feel right at home with Black Ops 4s. However, this creative class system, as you would expect from the newest Call of Duty, has a little bit of differences over the previous one. And Leading off of that, another thing that I feel like Black Ops 4 does very well and actually pretty substantially differentiates it from other Call of Duties is with the weapons. There's a lot more going on with Black Ops 4's weapons than other Call of Duty's weapons. They have a lot more personality, a lot more uniqueness this time around. Now, why do I say that? Well, in another Call of Duty, and pretty much any other Call of Duty, pick one, you have your assault rifles, and those assault rifles can get certain attachments. But the very first assault rifle you unlock is going to have, you know, seven attachments to choose from, and the last one you unlock is going to have the same seven attachments most of the time. Black Ops 4 does things a little bit differently. Each gun has kind of its own set of perks it can acquire. So a certain SMG might be able to get long barrel, a attachment that when put on is going to reduce your damage fall off, allowing you to use that SMG at further ranges. But other SMGs more meant for close quarters may not have the option to use that attachment, and they may have totally different attachments. Another thing is attachment 1 and attachment 2s that are present in Black Ops 4. Now what I mean by this is you can get high caliber. It's an attachment that makes headshots do more damage. Pretty useful. But some guns will have high caliber 1 and high caliber 2. High caliber 2 for the Rampart uh, assault rifle, for example, makes it so that 
shots to the upper chest also deal more damage. So it's the head with high caliber one, and if you also equip high caliber two at the same time, you're gonna get the head and near the head, the upper chest, giving you an even bigger advantage, giving you an even greater bonus in that area of where that attachment is specialized. The same thing works for you can have stock, which allows you to move faster when aiming down sights, and then stock two is going to let you move faster when you're crouching and prone and so on. So again, more bonuses in that same area. You have grip one, which is just reduces your recoil, and then grip two for some guns, which basically makes your gun an absolute laser beam. It actually makes your gun more accurate the longer you're aiming down sights. So you have these double attachments for your weapons that really, really shape the style of weapon. They shape the character of that weapon. And it's really, really neat because, again, certain weapons will have access to grip one and grip two, and others won't even have access to the grip at all. And Treyarch is really saying, okay, this particular weapon, this is a weapon that can get really accurate, that can become a laser beam, and accuracy is really the main factor in what makes this weapon unique, and you can double up on that with this new attachment system. And I actually think that's really, really neat. Also, in terms of attachments added that are really sweet, is operator mods. Now, once you get to the absolute maximum level for certain weapons, um, some had them and some didn't within the beta, but some of those weapons will have special operator mods. They're perks that take up two slots of attachments, like you actually have to spend two points just equipping this operator mod and another point equipping the wild card that will let you equip this operator mod. So three points in total of your 10 points to put on an operator mod, but the operator mods are crazy. One of the SMGs, the Spitfire, its operator mod is called Wildfire, and I'm showing you some background gameplay. With Wildfire, you increase the fire rate by something like 30%. It is absolutely noticeable, let's just say. Whereas normal rapid fire is around, let's say, a 6% bonus. So this is absolutely nuts. One of my favorite guns, the ABR-223 tactical rifle, it's a burst fire rifle. It has an operator mod that makes it so that instead of being where you press the trigger and it shoots one three round burst, you can now hold the trigger and it's just going to go blah, 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 like it's going to continuously fully automatic burst uh, in essence. And also as you hold the trigger, the bursts are going to speed up. So it's going to shoot faster and faster and faster the longer you're holding your trigger. There's another assault rifle that has an operator mod that's a bayonet. So you can, you know, one hit melee people up close with this bayonet. There's a bunch of different stuff in the game. There's another SMG that becomes belt fed and has a magazine size of 600. I did not misspeak, 600. So these operator mods are another way of introducing personality to these weapons. And again, what Trek has done here is that they've really tried to give each weapon uniqueness, each weapon its own character, because, you know, the belt-fed operator mod that I talked about that gives 600 rounds in a magazine, you get that for the SMG that has the biggest magazine size of 60. So basically it's saying, look, this is the SMG that's the spray and pray king. It just lays lead and you can shoot a, a guy and then another guy and then another guy and not have to reload yet. And the operator mod is going to accent this. It's just going to reaffirm this kind of style of weapon. And you'll see that again all the time with these operator mods. The wildfire operator mod that increases the rate of fire a ton, well that's already for the SMG that has the best rate of fire in its category, right? So they're trying to really give each weapon its own signature style. I think that's so cool. And those are really the pure positives, I believe, of Black Ops 4. If you're a fan of going in and creating these wild classes and trying to find that optimal loadout and really going outside the norm kind of, this is probably the best Call of Duty for that whatsoever. You get the pick 10 system, which allows the greatest customization. And on top of that, you have these very unique weapons with the unique styles. You have, you know, special attachments for them and all this stuff that really lets you experiment and have some pretty wild combinations. But moving on from there, let's talk about things that they kind of fall in the middle. They're not necessarily good nor bad. They're more personal preference. The first thing has got to be the specialists, right? Specialists are basically, they're supers, right? They're things that you unlock slowly over time. You don't have to get kills in order to acquire them, but a lot of them are going to be quite game-changing. For example, if you select the, I think it's Recon Specialist, well, 
after a little bit of just simply waiting as this bar fills up, you're gonna have access to his special ability, which lets you see enemies through walls. Yes, you put down these goggles and you completely see everyone all over the map through walls like an outline of where they're running and your entire team sees it as well. Incredibly powerful ability. Obviously, when you're using it, you have a massive advantage over everyone else. There's another specialist who gets a grenade launcher. There's another specialist who gets an electricity rifle that it shoots you and it insta-downs you and then one more shot will kill you. There's another specialist who gets an attack dog, right? There's a bunch of different specialist abilities. I think there is 10 available in the beta and all of them are actually quite powerful. Now I put the specialist in the meh category because it's really going to depend on your personal preference whether or not you like these. In the positives, it's a great way to diversify the game. If you pick a certain specialist and play out a game, it's going to play a lot differently than if you pick a different specialist. Like if I play the recon guy and I'm seen through walls and he has another tactical ability that he shoots a little piece of equipment and it sticks to a surface and around that surface it pings on your radar and shows people within that area so you can kind of see if anyone's there before you move into an objective and stuff like that. Whereas if you pick a different specialist, his ability puts down a barbed wire, a fence kind of across a certain area. So you can completely lock down an area with that guy. The barbed wire is super effective, takes forever to shoot down. So again, your play style is going to change dramatically depending on which guy you picked. It's kind of like what class you're going to pick, what subclass you're going to pick in Destiny, right? If you play a Hunter, your experience is going to be quite a bit different than if you play a Titan or Warlock. And that is absolutely a positive that's going to change your play style every time you pick a different specialist. Now, the negative is that in terms of Call of Duty, you're basically handing out free kill streaks. It is kind of BS that the guy at the bottom of the leaderboards who is doing terribly is going to at one point get the ability to see through walls, right? Like why does he get that ability? Well, again, it's just, it's handing out free kill streaks. Essentially, it's handing out free abilities. And some players who are really kind of hardcore Call of Duty purists may not like that at all. Another thing in the I don't know category is definitely the maps. It's the classic three-laned Treyarch maps, which is great if you like those. They're great for getting into the fight right away. They're not so good if you don't like getting killed from behind. Honestly, Treyarch has been absolutely known for its spawn trap phobic spawn design and map design in the sense that if you're playing any sort of kill game, kill confirmed, team deathmatch, anything like that, even a lot of objective games, if you're the team that's playing aggressively and you're pushing up even somewhat near the enemy spawn, they will spawn right behind you right away. And so a good team is often punished by getting killed behind all the time. And to be honest, because each map is always three lanes, like pretty much every time, they do somewhat get a little boring. I'd love to see maybe just one or two thrown in with four lanes, for goodness sakes, Treyarch. You don't have to go three lanes literally every time, in my opinion. But again, those are what Treyarch has determined are the maps that lead to the most action. They're very easy to understand and learn, and that's also a positive. So whether or not you like Treyarch's map design, if you already love it, you're gonna still love it. If you dislike it, you're gonna still dislike it. Nothing has changed. Now, moving on from there, we have the bad. And number one, I'm just gonna say is score streaks. Now, actually, Treyarch has come out and said that because of the community all agreeing with me, essentially, um, they're gonna buff certain score streaks because the problem with the score streaks is that they take actually a decent amount to earn. They aren't earned as easily this time around, I feel like, or it certainly does feel like in game. Um, but they're a little underwhelming this time around. A lot of the aerial streaks are very difficult to use because a lot of the maps take place indoors or, you know, the, a few outdoor maps that they have just have a giant, you know, freeway going over the top, for example. So if you have a Hellstrom, if you have any sort of attack helicopter or whatever, it can be very easy for people to just completely avoid those. Like I've called in many attack helicopters. They don't get a lot of kills. Like, we're not hearkening back to the days of COD 4 where the helicopters just shredded everyone. It's the exact opposite. They're very weak. Now, again, Trek has addressed this and said that they will be improving, but how much can they really improve? I don't know. It seems like another one of the Call of Duties where the score streaks feel a little underwhelming. Call of Duties basically kind of go in waves. You have score streaks that are unbelievably good, like Modern Warfare 2, and then you have ones that really are somewhat underwhelming. I would say kind of like World War 2. 
Black Ops 4 seems to be somewhat trending around a little underwhelming. Now, uh, admittedly, some people are going to dislike this because you want your score streaks that you earn to have punch. Some people are going to like not getting bombarded by Predator missiles and all that stuff over and over and over again. So maybe this falls a little bit more into personal preference. Moving on from there, another thing that I do believe is bad or at least is going to be viewed bad by quite a lot of people is the time to kill combined with body armor. So the time to kill in Black Ops 4 is significantly slower than we've had in quite a while. Like if you're coming from World War II, you're in for a jarring experience with Black Ops 4. It takes quite a lot of shots to take somebody down, quite a lot. And very often, if you run into two people, Maybe you'll get one, but getting that double kill is a lot more rare than it was in other Call of Duties. Now, some people are admittedly going to like this. People who like Destiny are going to love this. In fact, Black Ops 4, the time to kill feels actually very remarkably similar to Destiny 1. If you're coming from that game, you might actually be right at home. And some people enjoy a Call of Duty where you're not just melted immediately. With that being said, however, because of the time to kill, you aren't able to go on those lone wolf kill streaks that often. If you run into multiple enemies, you know, even if they're not looking at you, it can be hard to take down three enemies because you'll be reloading after two. Or, you know, it takes so long to kill them that they'll be turning around and they can easily turn on you. It also makes team shotting a legit thing in Black Ops 4. Like, if you're coming from Destiny and you are just trying to get a break from the team shotting, so you want to try a good old Call of Duty where it's just win your ones or you can win a 1v2, you yikes, <laughs> this game has gotten a lot more Destiny in this sense that there will be people team showing the crap out of you it is a hundred percent a thing now this already slower time to kill is combined with a gear piece body armor and what it does is it straight up gives you 50 extra health when you spawn so you have 200 health instead of 150 but if someone shoots down your body armor and then you heal up which manual healing that's another you kind of you're gonna depend on your personal preference but once you heal up you won't go back to 200, the body armor is destroyed, and you'll only go back to 150. So that's kind of how they've balanced it. But it's become very crutch, because if I have just spawned, or if you have just spawned, and one of us has body armor and has 200 health, and one of us does not and has 150 health, well, I think one of us has a pretty significant advantage. You will lose a lot of gunfights to body armor. I found myself admittedly putting body armor on pretty much every class because I was so sick of it. Now, there are some counters. For example, if you're using the armor piercing uh, rounds attachment for your weapon, it's going to shoot right through body armor like it's nothing. It's going to ignore people's body armor, which is super fun to do because you melt them really a lot faster and they definitely don't expect it. It's hilarious, but... But you can't realistically say, okay, waste uh, an attachment slot on every single weapon just to get armor piercing rounds. Like that seems like a little much. But some of these things combine, mainly the slow time to kill and the specialist focus in Black Ops 4 to create basically the main negative of Black Ops 4, but also somewhat of a positive, which is this game is not so great to play solo. Now, maybe the um, Battle Royale mode will be incredibly fun to play solo, but the normal just team deathmatch or objective focused games, they're a little bit harder. They're not a little bit, they're quite a lot harder to play solo when compared to other Call of Duties. Now, that's a problem because Call of Duty has always been a game franchise that's just been, hey, gonna hop on an hour before I go to bed, play a few games, kill some guys, and then just get off. But with Black Ops 4, because of the specialists and the fact that you can use abilities in tandem, like I'm going to use my vision pulse, see through walls, and then you're going to do something, or hey, can we get a guy to put the barbed wire in this area and block it off, and then I'm going to set up a, a turret here, or whatever. There's so many different things that you can do and work off your teammates in terms of specialist abilities that if you're going in solo and you get matched up with a squad, it's not going to be fun. Not going to be fun at all. Especially when, again, because of the slower time to kill, the fact that you can just lone wolf it and take things into your own hands, well, it's way harder to do that in Black Ops 4 than it was in Black Ops 3 and Black Ops 2 even. Now, on the flip side of that, and we're going back to positives here, if you are someone who plays with a dedicated group of friends, this could be the best Call of Duty ever for you. 
because you legitimately will be able to work as a team. Heck, one of the specialists is a medic. His abilities are, number one, he throws down um, a pack of magazines, assault magazines, and people can pick them up. And then as long as you're alive, you're going to be getting extra score for getting kills as long as you picked up that assault mag. So that's going to really help your team. You're getting more UAVs and all that stuff. And the, his special stability for the medic actually heals everyone on the team for an extra 50 points. So everyone's health goes up by 50 points. Um, that's also very, very powerful. And of course you can use this solo, but it's so much more effective if you're communicating with your team and saying, all right guys, I've put down assault mags, come get them, come get them. And they all come and get some. And you're saying, when should I heal? All right, we're making a push, heal now, heal now. And then you go into the hard point zone or something like that. It's so much more effective than just trying to do that randomly with guesswork in solo. So this whole shebang is really gonna depend on if you've got a dedicated play group of friends that play Call of Duty. If you buy Call of Duty with your friends every year, then this is actually going to be more of a positive. Black Ops 4 is a very team-oriented game. But if you're someone who just buys it for yourself, you play solo a lot, yikes, you might have a really hard time with Black Ops 4. Of course, I would recommend trying it with the open beta, but I'm, I'm sure you'll find the same things I've found. However, since we are in the bad category, there is there is one more bad, and this is just pretty much objectively bad across the board, and that is the monetization model for Black Ops 4. Right now, you can buy the base game, no worries, and admittedly, Call of Duty has always offered a decent amount of content. With Black Ops 4, you're going to get a full multiplayer experience, I think there's something like 12 or 16 maps that come with the game. You're going to get zombies, which is always fun, Treyarch does a great job with zombies. And you're not going to get a campaign this time. You're going to get the Battle Royale mode. And, you know, that's really up in the air. Who knows how that mode is going to be. But if you want anything more than that, you've got really an archaic model of, again, monetization. First of all, there's no Seasons Pass. Instead, there's a Black Ops Pass. It's $40, and what it does is basically give you the contents of a Seasons Pass without allowing you to buy it separately. So you're going to get like 12 maps in total. You're going to get a certain amount of Zombies maps. You're going to get some free skins and all this stuff. And there's no option to buy it separately. So if you want access to the Zombies maps, just the Zombies maps, if you're not a multiplayer guy, too bad. You still got to pay the $40. This is not a great idea, and it doesn't allow you to split it up. Like, uh, for other Call of Duty's, it'd be DLC 1, 2, and 3. And you, if you didn't like the looks of DLC 2, you didn't have to buy it. You could just buy 1 and 3, right? With the Black Ops Pass, it's all or nothing. On top of that, COD points are absolutely returning, so microtransactions are absolutely returning. And it looks to be that supply drops will likely return as well a la Black Ops 3. Hopefully with some sort of in-game currency uh, similar to armory credits that's going to allow you to buy them outright in World War II. But the fact remains, it's a full price game, but minus the campaign this time. And instead, it's a game mode that we really don't know too much about. That's also charging a, for a $40 Seasons Pass that is worse than a normal Seasons Pass. And that's also cramming in microtransactions, right? That's a lot to ask for. But it's the Activision specialty. And, you know, at, there was a time where this was the norm, but in 2018 and 2019, we've got Battlefield 5 coming out with completely free DLC. There's no premium pass with Battlefield. In fact, they're very transparent in saying, look, we're going to have a direct purchase, you know, a skin store, somewhat like Fortnite, and that's it. Otherwise, free DLC. We've also got Anthem coming out in 2019. Free DLC. We've got The Division 2. Free DLC. These are some heavy hitter, big AAA games that offer a great level of quality and have free DLC, with Black Ops doing basically the complete opposite. That absolutely should matter in people's minds of whether or not they want to purchase this game, and especially if they want to purchase any sort of deluxe editions that come with these add-ons. So, does Black Ops 4 suck? Well, frankly, that's for you to decide. There are some absolute positives. There are some absolute innovations. I think the thing that this game does the best, and it should not be understated, this is a big thing, is the uniqueness of the weaponry, is adding these operator mods, adding these unique, you know, attachment one and attachment twos, all this stuff is really rejuvenating a gun system that for a very long time was just add a, a bunch of assault rifles and they have slightly different fire rates and slightly different damages. Black Ops 4's uh, weapons feel very different from one another because of these things I've talked about. That is a huge positive. 
But then we have a lot of unknowns. We have this mystery battle royale game type. We have specialists. We have the maps. We have a lot of things, the time to kill, that fall to personal preference, which they aren't straight innovations per se. They're different directions that Treyarch is taking the franchise. And again, they're not negatives. The specialists don't think that I'm saying that they are a negative addition to the game. In a lot of ways, they're very, very fun. But again, if you're a Call of Duty purist, you may absolutely hate them. And that's really going to factor into your decision to buy this game. And we do have some outright negatives. The score streaks are totally underpowered in my opinion. And mainly just the monetization model is absolutely terrible. They really, really need to rethink that. And, you know, Call of Duty, there's been so many Call of Duties at this point, they really shouldn't be toying with the fan base this heavily. Maybe, you know, ditch the Black Ops Pass, give that to us for free if you're still planning on doing supply jobs and microtransactions, for goodness sakes. But, this is a game that's absolutely worth trying out in the open beta. See if you enjoy it, because I think a lot of people actually will. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Black Ops 4 content, let me know in the comment section down below. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickKakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.